Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the 411 Talk Zone radio show, Red Pill Edition. My name is Leon Jones. Now, during this segment, I'm going to get into some politics because there's something that I'm definitely seeing, but nobody is really bringing it to the surface. And I really got wind of it from the Democratic primaries. And I'm talking about Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. Now, from my humble belief, I believe that Joe Biden wanted to get the black vote. And that's why he picked Kamala Harris. Now, Kamala Harris is half Indian and half Jamaican. She did go to Howard University, and she is a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. However, when I look at Kamala Harris, she's just symbolism for the African-American woman. And I say this because when it comes to politics, Black people don't vote on the issues, they vote for the symbolism. If the individuals look like them, they will vote for them, unless they have an R by their name. Then they call them coons and sellouts and uncle ruckuses and bootlegging, bootlegging uncle Tom. Now, I'm going to title this video the Kamala Harris and Joe Biden debate. Title of this video is the Kamala Harris Joe Biden debate. And I'm simply giving this video that name because I do believe they're at odds at one another. Now, if you don't believe me, I'm going to give you my evidence. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and I'm going to share my sound. And uh, now, my source is going to be some news operation that I don't agree with. However, if they bring up something that I can decipher, then I'm going to utilize their source. And I'm going to talk about MSNBC. Of course, your likes of Al Sharpton, Joy Reid, they're on that channel. But in this video, you are going to see a debate between Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. Let's go ahead and wind it up. Green. The federal government must step in. So when Biden picked the California senator as his running mate, we decided to take a look at where they stand, especially on major issues where they don't agree. And we found that she often leans to his left. First, we'll look at Medicare for all, which Biden opposes, putting Harris to the left of him. Harris co-sponsored Senator Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill in the Senate, but later said she was not comfortable with it. Then she proposed her own version. We would have to go from the current system into a Medicare for All system. She laid out a plan that would guarantee coverage for all Americans and keep a large role for private insurers. The right of every American to have access to decent health care. Biden wants to shore up Obamacare by giving Americans more choices and reducing costs. When it comes to immigration, 
Harris is also left of Biden on some issues, but she has had right-leaning positions in the past. As district attorney of San Francisco, she supported a city policy that delivered undocumented minors to Immigration and Customs Enforcement if they were arrested and suspected of a felony. Her ideas on the issue have evolved, though. She wants to re-examine and potentially restructure ICE. Biden has said that ICE should be reformed, not abolished. His current plan would increase training and address inhumane practices. Both support a path to citizenship and oppose expanding Trump's border wall. Harris seems more ambitious than Biden when it comes to climate change. She co-sponsored the Green New Deal in the Senate, while Biden has not endorsed it. Biden has linked his climate proposal to coronavirus economic recovery, but drawn criticism from progressives for not going far enough. Harris has been steadfast when it comes to supporting full abortion access. She thrilled pro-choice activists when she grilled Supreme Court Fair Justice use. Brett Kavanaugh during Fair his use. confirmation hearing. Can you think of any laws that give government the power to make decisions about uh, the male body? And she voted against a bill that would ban terminating a pregnancy after 20 weeks, often referred to as a late-term abortion. Biden voted in favor of banning them in 2003. And back in the 1970s, he voted to prohibit federal funds from being used to pay for most terminations. He has since flipped his position on federal funds, and he maintains that access to abortion should be legal. Harris and Biden support LGBTQ rights, but Harris has a more consistent progressive record, while Biden has voted against same-sex marriage in the past. Harris was officiating same-sex marriages before it became the law of the land. These marriages are legitimate, they are legal, and they are going to continue, and it's about time. Biden did eventually voice powerful early support for legalizing same-sex marriage, even before Obama did. Men marrying men, women marrying women, and heterosexual men and women marrying women are entitled to the same exact rights. As Attorney General of California, Harris supported transgender people's right to use their bathroom of choice, though she did sign legal briefs denying gender reassignment surgeries for two transgender inmates. Today, both candidates support the Equality Act, which would give LGBTQ Americans anti-discrimination protection. Harris and Biden largely agree on gun control. Both support a ban on assault weapons and the sale of high-capacity magazines, as well as universal background checks. Because no one needs an AR-15. Harris's views on marijuana are more progressive than Biden's. In 2018, she co-sponsored the Marijuana Justice Act, which would legalize it on the federal level. She supports clearing non-violent marijuana-related charges. Have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and I, and I inhale. I didn't. I did inhale. Biden supports decriminalizing possession, but doesn't support federal legalization. Criminal justice is an issue where both Harris and Biden have been widely criticized by progressive Democrats. Harris for pursuing legislation that would prosecute parents whose children miss too many days of school without an excuse, defending the convictions of some people even after they were proven innocent, and fighting releases after a federal court found unconstitutional overcrowding in California's prisons. In the 1980s, Biden supported mandatory minimum sentences for drug offenses. He also helped write a 1994 crime bill that contributed to mass incarceration. The rampant crime and drug abuse. But both Harris and Biden have become much more liberal. They now support ending mandatory minimum sentencing, lowering the prison population, improving the treatment of inmates, and eliminating private prisons. And both are against the death penalty. Harris and Biden have often disagreed when it comes to trade. She opposed the Trans-Pacific Partnership, while Biden worked to pass it during Obama's final months in office. Harris voted against the United States-Mexico-Canada Free Trade Agreement, and Biden supported it. He also voted for NAFTA in 1994. Overall, Kamala Harris seems to be more liberal than Biden, which is probably one of the reasons why he picked her. 
What progressive Democrats are wondering is whether that will actually pull the Democrats' platform more to the left or shift policy in the future. They give us Wow. And just to show you what would happen if the 25th Amendment was utilized to put Kamala Harris in office. And based on a video, she and Joe Biden agreed with very little, but disagreed with a lot. But overall, they're both liberal. Now, my opinion of Joe Biden is he is being pushed by the left to come more left. But getting to Kamala Harris, she says she has told allies that media coverage of her would be different if she were a white man. Now, VP Kamala Harris Basically, in my humble opinion, didn't have enough qualifications to be a senator. Yes, she was the DA of San Francisco. She replaced a senator, may have been Barbara Boxer or Diane Feinstein. One of those Democratic senators did retire, but for the most part, when I look at Kamala Harris, she tries to play a role of being black, but she's not married to a black. She tries to play a role of understanding the black community, but she really doesn't understand the black community. And one thing I can tell you about politicians is they know how to play to their constituency. And I've always said this. When it comes to politics, it's not just your vote. You need money, you need an issue, and you have to be well organized. Well, again, with Kamala Harris, she's having trouble keeping staff. A number of people don't like her. She has a low approval. Uh, now, the vice president is one that has a view, again, that if she was a white man, the coverage of her would be different. Again, she's trying to utilize the race card. She did that when she debated Joe Biden during the Democratic primary. And the funny thing about it is she didn't even come close to winning the presidential primary, but she got picked by Joe Biden. Again, I believe she got picked so she can get the Black vote. Now, the information that I'm giving you came from MSNBC and the information about Kamala Harris is coming from the New York Times. And basically they spoke with several White House sources about Harris's position in the administration. And again, Harris has been confiding in allies that she thought the news would cover her differently if she were white and of course male. So now she's trying to utilize the race and the gender card. And this is what has attributed some of her negative press coverage, particularly in the conservative media outlet looks. Again, Harris and Biden have struggled historically because they have low job approval ratings. And here's why. Their policies are not popular. And again, when I look at Harris, she is more unpopular than any vice president in modern history. Now, the Times reported that Harris had turned to powerful candidates such as Hillary Clinton to help her clear her path towards she's trying to run for president. Now, the Times also said vice president has faced some difficulties with items in her, in her portfolio. 
And the big issues include immigration and voting rights. Again, the Times reported that Harris had turned to powerful confidence or confidants such as Hillary Clinton. And Hillary Clinton, she's tried to run for president. She rode the coattails of her husband to become senator of New York. She wasn't very good there. And she's not the one that you should turn to for any type of presidential run. She will never win. Why? Because whether you're Democratic or you're Republican, individuals in both parties don't like her. They don't like the Clintons, period. But again, the Times said that the vice president has faced some difficulties with items in her portfolio, and they include voting rights and immigration rights. Now, some allies told the Times they felt Biden used Harris to win the White House, but kept her out of day-to-day -day duties of governing. I believe some of that is true. Again, in order to win the Black vote, he picked someone who looked like them. Why? Because on the left, they're good at playing the race card, the gender card, the sexuality card. Now, sources, including a senior White House official and two others familiar with the meeting, describe a meeting between Biden and Senator Joe Manchin over the landmark BBB, not Better Business Bureau, but Build Back Better. I call it Build Back and You'll Be Broke. Legislation where Biden asked Harris to say hello to Manchin before excusing her from the room. Now, Harris made history as vice president when she was sworn in as the first female Black and South Asian vice president. Now, you see again, they're using race. Now, I just want to say this. Obama was half and half. He wasn't totally black. But regardless, I don't believe Harris was the right person for Biden to pick. She's very liberal. She's for feminist policies. She's for policies like higher taxes. Now, again, when it comes to politics, politicians they're put there by their constituents to bring them the resources. So most politicians are gonna look out for themselves and then their constituents. That's how it is. The United States is a big oligarchy. Now, in December, Harris was criticized, and we are in December, after her office reported unusually high staff turnover. Well, when that's happened, that means the individuals working for her can't stand her. So the exit of staffers, which included Simone Sanders, who was Harris's chief spokesperson, and Ashley Etienne, her communications director. Now, criticism has since been leveled at Harris with reports attributing to high turnover, to burnout, and staffers apprehension to being labeled a Harris person. Now, former staffer, for one, told the Washington Post that her former boss was highly critical and that she had to put up with a constant amount of soul-destroying criticism, while Harris has received heat for her high staff turnover. It's worth noting that the Trump administration saw more firings, resignations, and reassignments of top staffers than any other first year administration in modern history. The Washington Post reported that as of January 12, 2018, 34% of Trump's top staff had either left or changed positions. This was double the turnover seen in President Reagan's first year and four times that of President Obama's. Now, again, the White House did not immediately respond to a request for comment from insider. Now, again, what does the President Trump administration 
have to do what was stated here. And this is what a number of liberals do. They don't take responsibility for their actions. They want to put the blame on someone else. So, you know, at the end of the day, one must understand that there is strife going on between Biden and the Vice President Harris. And I also believe during the Trump administration as well, there was some strife going on with Mike Pence and President Trump. I believe those guys didn't like each other. And I believe that Trump selected Pence. Now I live here in Indiana. Pence was the governor. And I believe if Pence had did Pence did not become vice president, he may have lost the election because he wasn't a very good governor here in Indiana. But Trump picked Vice President Pence because Pence was a congressman and he was a governor. And of course, Pence is very conservative. So when it comes to politics, one thing that you must understand is you have to solidify your base. That is what Kamala Harris did. And of course, that's what Mike Pence did. But on the up and up, I do believe that at the top, there is some strife between Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. And if you don't believe me, you can go back and look at that video because those are some major issues that you have Kamala Harris way left of Joe Biden, particularly on immigration, Medicare, the Green New Deal, abortion. Those are pivotal issues, probably on education as well. Now, Biden was known to be a moderate, but I believe the left is pulling Biden's strings. And I know there's some Democrats that don't agree with Biden being in power, but Biden ran because of what happened in Charlottesville, according to him. But again, what happened in Charlottesville when President Trump said they're good people on both sides? Well, they cut the video short right there. He did not say anything about white supremacists. In fact, he condoned white supremacy. But again, when you have a media out here that I call the fourth level of government, the media has a high influence on changing people's minds. This is why I always tell people you have to look into the issues yourself. It's not just about voting. It's understanding what is going on around you. Now, also coming up, I am going to do a video on civics education. Well, my school, Purdue University here in Indiana, has instituted a civics requirement. Now, why did they institute that requirement? It's because a number of people don't know about the three branches of government. Many of them don't even know how government representatives are chosen. A number of people don't care. However, understanding civics, understanding the three branches of government will give you a good idea about understanding politics. Again, politics has many options. It's a lot of money in politics. Act blue, win red, both parties, it's about the money. This is why I always say voting is not just an issue. You have to be on the grassroots level. But let me get back to the original topic. I believe that there is opposition between Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. In fact, Kamala Harris 
told Charlemagne, and this is the second time Charlemagne, the God, got clowned. I already got clowned the first time by Joe Biden saying that if you don't know to vote for me or vote for Trump, you ain't black. Well, Kamala Harris wagged her finger like a typical sister getting upset, telling Biden, I mean, telling Charlemagne, you're starting to sound like a Republican. Well, do all Republicans talk like that? See, the individuals out there who are sheep when it comes to politics, you better wake up. Because I don't care what side of the coin you sit on. Do you want your government controlling every move you make? Do you want your government controlling all of your money? Do you want your government policing your thinking? Well, if you do, you keep voting for these tyrannical representatives. Because when it comes to a number of American people, they're too cowardly to fight. And by the time they wake up, it's too late. But in the end, I want you all to tell me what you think. Is their strife between Kamala Harris and Joe Biden? You be the judge. And that's my commentary for this edition of the 411 Talk Zone radio show right here on YouTube. If you like what I just presented, please comment, share, and subscribe. And again, Merry Christmas to everybody. I don't celebrate Christmas, but I'm not afraid to say Merry Christmas. And again, if you're into Jesus, Jesus wasn't born in December. And we have to get off the commercials of the, the commercialism when it comes to Christmas. Buying people gifts, that's not what the holiday is about. Understanding that. Jesus was born, although he wasn't born in December, which I may do a video in the future on these holidays. The commercialism makes the holiday a pagan holiday. But getting back to my videos, if you're looking for some educational material, check out the Mind of STEM channel. And on that channel, I'll give you a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math, and some of the Topics that I mentioned on that channel are entomology, biology, complex numbers, and industrial engineering. Now, if you can't find the 411 Talk Zone radio show on YouTube, you can check my channel out on Twitter, MeWe, and Parlor. Although I haven't posted too much on Parlor and MeWe because they're up and down when it comes to posting videos. When I mean up and down, their sites are either up or they're down, but you can still catch me on Twitter. You can also catch me on Twitter and LinkedIn when it comes to all of my mind of STEM videos. Now, coming in January, I won't bring back the blog talk radio show and i'm going to try to do it with stream yards and of course zoom working on getting some better equipment and organization for my channel so i can deliver a better product and in the end I'm just going to share a little bit of this with you be blessed for what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have. Always know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. And for you individuals who believe that they're being called out or they're not being called out, I'd like to share this with you as well. If it doesn't apply, 
let it fly. But if the shoe fits, wear it. If you don't like the shoe, change it. And once again, thank you for listening to this edition of the 411 Talk Zone Radio Show, Christmas Eve edition. Till next time. My name is Leon Jones. I want you all to have a wonderful and gracious evening. God bless you. I'm out.